Oh, yeah, okay. Welcome to Tuesday. Back in the backyard. You might see some chickens in the background. There's a couple over there right now. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, right there. See the little baby chicks running? Oh, they ran away. Oh, well. They're all around today. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> hello song. I was thinking it might be nice to do different songs for hello. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, the, what do you call it? Like the telephone song, maybe, but I don't know how I'd get you guys to say the part that you're supposed to say. You know, the part where you say uh, someone's calling my name. I can't, I'm not sure I can figure that out. I mean, I could do it for you, I suppose. All right, here we go. Uh, and a one, and a two, and a. Hello, everybody. So glad to see you. Hello, everybody. We're so glad to see you. Hello to you. And so glad to see you. Hello to the corn with the rainbow horn. We're so glad to see you too. Hello to just a rainbow. So glad to see you. Hello to Sophia. So glad to see you too. Hello to Franny. So glad to see you. Hello to Luke Skywalker. So glad to see you too. Hello to Super Mario Brothers with a cat power. So glad to see you. Hello to Hot Wheels Race Car. So glad to see you too. Hello to Lucy. So glad to see you. Hello. Cash, we're so glad to see you too. Hello to Elliot, so glad to see you. Hello to Abby, we're so glad to see you too. Hello to Ronan, so glad to see you. Hello, everybody, we're so glad to. short today huh not that many names so it didn't last very long all right let's see what books I'm gonna pick today I got a bunch of different choices oh yeah I wanted to finish this one I guess from yesterday you know I had I sort of ran out of time uh, did I tell ever tell you how lucky you are we saw this guy the bee watchers right let's see where did we end up oh we saw that one too teaching ducks how to read we saw this one playing tubas. Oh, here's the new one. I think that's where we stopped, right here. So here's the next page. This says, uh, did I ever tell you how lucky you are, right? And he says, on this page, he says, and oh, just suppose you were poor Harry Haddo. Try as he will, he can't make a shadow. He thinks that perhaps something is wrong with his giz. And I think that by golly, there probably is. So look, everybody else is a shadow. The sun's shining which direction? Oh, over here, I guess. And everybody's got shadow, 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 shadow. He has no shadow. What? And the brothers Bazoo, the poor brothers Bazoo. Suppose your hair grew like theirs happened to do. You think you're unlucky? I'm telling you, ducky. Some people are muchly, oh, ever so muchly, muchly more, more, more unlucky than you. Oh, I see what happens. This guy's hair grows into this guy's beard. And then here his hair grows in his beard. They're all stuck together. And suppose that you lived in the forest in France, in that forest, where the average young person hasn't, just hasn't a chance to escape from the perilous pants eating plants. <gasps> Ooh, plants that eat pants. Guys, can you see? I'm, it's hard for me outside to tell what you, yeah, that, that, okay. um, but your pants are safe. You're a fortunate guy and you ought to be shouting, how lucky am I? Oh man, look, his pants came off oh, <laughs> and he's not wearing underwear. Oh my gosh. 
And speaking of plants, you should be greatly gladish that you're not Farmer Falkenberg's 17th radish. Oh, I see if you count them, starting I think from the big one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, the 17th one, a worm is gonna eat it, looks like. Oh, over the microphone. And you're so, so lucky that you're not Gucky Gown, who lives by himself 90 miles out of town in the ruins of Ronk. Ronk is rather run down. Hmm. Doesn't look so bad, though. He's like relaxing in a pool there. It's not so bad. And you're so, so, so lucky that you're not a left sock left behind by mistake in the caverns of croc hmm caverns are like caves and there's a sock all by itself with a kitty i think that's a kitty coming to check it out can you see that thank goodness for all the things you are not thank goodness you're not something someone forgot and left all alone in some hunkerish place like a rusty tin coat hanger hanging in space there's a, what do you call it? Clothes hanger all by itself. No clothes, no people either. That's why I say ducky, don't grumble, don't stew. Some critters are much, much, oh ever so much, much, so muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. And now the kid's sitting on a prickly cactus as well. And a bird. And they don't seem to mind because other people are more unlucky than sitting on a prickly cactus, I guess. And that is the end. Yay for Dr. Seuss. All right. Let's see what else I have here. I think maybe I'm going to go with a fax book and then you like a sandwich of a fax book and then a story book. This book that has the fax is about lightning. And I heard that and this is hard to believe that it's supposed to maybe rain on Wednesday and Wednesday night. Really? And I think it's coming from the south, like, um, uh, what do you call it? Warmer air, um, humid. So it could possibly lightning. I don't know. It might not. But here's how lightning works. And we're going to learn about it. All right, here we go. What is lightning? Question mark. Bright flashes light up the sky. Big jagged streaks hit the ground. The storm, the storm has brought lightning. And there's a really cool picture of lightning coming down to hit the ground. There's a big one up there too. I wonder if that's all the same thing. That's a big bolt of lightning. Lightning is a kind of electricity, true story. Storm clouds carry water droplets and ice crystals. The tiny particles, the little crystals bump into one another and that starts making electrical charges in the clouds. I did not know this part. It's from the little ice crystals bouncing around. As the electricity becomes stronger, like it builds up the positive and the negative charges I heard, lightning um, is how clouds get rid of the electricity. So once they have like built up to a lot, they can't hold any more, they let it go with a big flash. And that's another really big bolt of lightning with all the little, arms coming out too. Lines of lightning are called bolts. They can be 10 miles long, which is very long. They can also be 554,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is crazy hot, like super duper hot. I don't know even how hot that is. It's very hot. Like a hot day in Fahrenheit is like 100. That's a hot day, so that's a lot hotter. There's kind of, these are different kinds of lightning. Ribbon lightning looks like jagged streaks. It darts from the sky towards the ground. So this is ribbon lightning, I guess. Forked lightning also goes from a cloud towards the ground. It looks like an upside down tree. So it's going spreading out in different places. Although there's the main, you can see the main bolt, right? The main, I guess they call that ribbon. Lightning doesn't always shoot towards the ground. Sheet lightning streaks inside a cloud. Lightning bolts also jump from cloud to cloud. Oh, look at that. Lightning that doesn't go down, it goes back up. I've never seen that kind. 
crash and boom. Thunder is the sound of lightning, heating the air. Oh, heating the air, I did not know that. A loud crash means lightning is close. Many booms mean lightning is far away. Lightning is dangerous. Stay indoors during a thunderstorm. If you're caught outside during a storm, stay away from trees and power lines because they're the tallest things. Lightning usually lands on the tallest thing around you. That's what they say. Oh, and that's the end. Wow, that was fast. Hmm. Okay. I also heard that lightning actually comes from the ground up to like the, the electrical charge on the ground that comes up to meet the lightning. Boom. Anyway, maybe we'll see lightning tomorrow night. I don't know. Hopefully. Let's see. I still have more choices. Uh, hmm. I think, I think I'm going to do, I think I have time for a, two more actually. So I'm going to try this one. This one's pretty cool. It's called Rough Face Girl. It's another Native American story. Um, and let's see who wrote it. Rough Face Girl, written by Rafe Martin, drawings done by David Shannon. Once, long ago, there was a village by the shores of Lake Ontario. Lake Ontario, I think, is one of the Great Lakes over by uh, who, Michigan, I think it is. I'm not sure about totally. Anyway, there's a little village. See all the little houses? Off from the other wigwams of this village stood one great huge wigwam, which is another name for a teepee, I'm pretty sure. Painted on its sides were pictures of the sun and the moon and the stars and plants and trees and animals. So there's a lot of pictures on it. If you see this, this is the opening and there's a person. So that's a very large teepee. That's like, a, I don't know, 30 footer or something. And there's some deer, eagle, I think, moon, I mean moon, sun, stars, right? And inside this wigwam, there was said to live a very great, rich, powerful, and supposedly handsome, invisible being. Someone invisible, you can't see him. Uh, little chickies, where are you going? Uh, little, 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 where am I? Oh, yeah. However, no one could see him except for his sister who lived there too. Many women wanted to marry this invisible being, but his sister said, only the one who can see him will be the one that can marry him. So if you can't see him, you're not going to get married to him, right? Oh, man, I just have to show you this. This is too cute, guys. Let's see, can you see that? Look at all the little baby chicks. Aww. Can you see them? I think you can. Do a close-up later, maybe after this story. All right, back to the story. Now, in this village, there lived a poor man who had three daughters. The two older daughters were cruel and hard-hearted. That means they weren't very friendly. And they made their younger sister sit by the fire and feed the flame. So in uh, the old days in the teepee, you actually did the fire inside of the teepee to stay warm. Uh, so she has to, whatever, tend to the fire. When the burning branches popped, the sparks fell on her. In time, her hands became burnt and scarred. Her arms, too, became rough and scarred. Even her face was marked by the fire and her beautiful long black hair hung ragged and charred. So she gets too much fire. She's like getting kind of burnt, kind of. Not burnt, burnt, but like scarred. Uh, and those two older sisters just laughed at her saying, ha, ah, you're not good. Um, you're not good looking. You're a rough faced girl. And they made her life very lonely and miserable indeed. So there she is by the fire getting the sparks lighting. Oh, the chickens are closer. I have, I'm sorry. Kinda. Where the, there they are. Do you see them? Hello, little chickies. What do you say? They're funny, huh? Their feathers, their big feathers are just starting to come in. Can you see them? Yeah, you can. <laughs> All right, back to the story. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to keep stopping like that. The chickens are just too cute. One day, these two older sisters went to their father and said, Father, give us some necklaces. Wait, am I doing this good? Yeah. Oh, no. I made the, the mic drop. Maybe you couldn't hear me for a while. Sorry about that, guys. I had the mic laying on the ground. 
little, oh yeah, they said, give us some necklaces and give us some new buckskin dresses and get some pretty beaded moccasins. We're going to marry the invisible being. All dressed up to try to get married to this guy. And uh, so their father gave them all these things. Dressed in their finest, the two girls marched through the village. All the people pointed to stare and said, look at those beautiful women. They said, surely they shall marry the invisible being. So look how fancy they are. Of course he's going to want to marry them. And if those two girls were proud and hard-hearted before, they were even prouder now. They walked haughtily through the village. That means with a lot of pride, like with your chin up like that. And at last they came to the wigwam of the invisible being. And there was his sister waiting for them. She knew they were coming. Ooh, and she does not look happy in that picture because she doesn't look like, oh, hi, how are you doing? She's more like, hmm, what do you guys want? Why have you come, she asked. We want to marry the invisible being, they answered. That's why we're here. If you want to marry my brother, she replied, you have to see him. Tell me, have you seen the invisible being? And the, girl, the sister said, of course we've seen him. Can't you see how pretty we are? Can't you see the beautiful clothes we wear? Oh, yes. Anyone could tell that we've truly seen the invisible being because we have fancy clothes, which is not really how you see him. You just have to see him. All right, she said quietly. If you think you've seen him, then tell me. What is his bow made of? The um, you know, like a bow and arrow. What's his bow made of? And suddenly her voice, her voice was swift as lightning and strong as thunder. So she knows the answer, but she doesn't think that they do, right? So she asked them. And uh, the girl said, uh, "His bow?" They stammered as far as his uh, bow. Oh, we know, we know. But turning desperately to one another, they whispered, "What shall we say? Let's say it's the oak tree." So they said. His bow is made out of the great oak tree. No, said the sister of the invisible being, no. Oh, she saw at once how they lied. Tell me, she continued, if you think you see my brother the invisible being, then what's the runner of his sled made out of? And a sled is, ah, a sled. It's like a, it's like a cart, but with no wheels, and it, like, you just drag it on the ground, usually across the snow. So they're at the runners are the part that's on the ground there. They're asking, what's that made of? Uh, we know, we know, these little cries, those two sisters. But whispering feverishly again, they wondered, what shall we say? What shall we say? Uh, let's just say it's the green willow branch. And um, so they said it. And the sister said, no, no, you have not seen my brother. Now go home. Just test us fairly, they explained. We've seen them. Just don't ask us all these silly questions. We don't know what his stuff is made out of. All right, said the sister of the invisible being. Come with me. And I think she brought him inside. Wait, can you see the pictures? I guess I should make it closer, huh? There you go. She, uh, so she took them back to the great wet guam and sat them in the seats furthest from the entrance, which are the guest seats. Soon, they heard footsteps coming along the path. Then something stepped inside. Though they heard some breathing, the two sisters still couldn't see anything. Suddenly, a great bow and a beaded quiver of arrows appeared in the air and were set down. Oh my gosh, there it is. So you can't see the person, but there's his stuff, the arrows and the bow. And uh, the little, but though... Though those two girls sat there, their eyes wide, all through that night, they never saw any other thing. And in the morning, they had to go home ashamed because they never saw the invisible being. They just saw his stuff. The next day, sorry, here's the picture. The next day, the rough faced girl went to her father and said, Father, may I please have some beads? And may I please have a new buckskin dress and some pretty moccasins? I'm going to marry the invisible being. For wherever I look, I always see his face. So she has seen him, right? Different. But her father sighed. Oh, daughter, he said, I'm sorry. I have no beads left for you. Only some little broken shells. I have no buckskin dress either. And as for moccasins, all I have left are my old, worn out, cracked and stretched out pair from last year. And they're much too big. But she said, whatever you can spare, I can use. So he gave her the little things that he had. So he gave her some of these, sorry, some beads, I mean, broken shells, 
And here's this old worn out moccasin. Then uh, she found some dried reeds and taking the little broken shells, she strung her own necklace. She stripped some birch bark from the dead trees and made a cap and a dress and leggings. So birch is a kind of tree with a really white-ish bark and you could peel it off. So she made a dress out of bark. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and some leggings. Then with a sharp piece of bone, she carved in the bark pictures of the sun and the moon and the stars and plants and trees and animals. Oh, that's just like the invisible beings um, wigwam, right? She went down um, the lake to the lake shore and soaked the moccasins in water until they grew soft. Then she molded them to her feet, but they were still too big and they flap, flap, flap like duck's feet as she walked. Then all the people came out of their wigwams. They pointed and stared and they said, look at that girl, they laughed, look at her strange clothes. Hey, 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 go home, girl, you'll never marry them. Those little being, they're not being nice. They're like, look at you. You can't marry him. You've just got like, I don't know, homemade clothes on. Not fancy enough. But the rough faced girl had faith in herself and she had courage. She did not turn back. She just kept walking right through the village. So even though people are making fun of her, she's like, nope, I've seen him, so I know what I'm doing. Uh, as she walked on, she saw the great beauty of the earth and skies spreading before her. And truly, she alone, of all the people in that village, saw in these things the sweet and yet awesome face of the invisible being. Oh, I see it, guys. Check it out. So here she is walking in the forest. And um, let's see, where is she? She is right here. And if you look at the picture, see this tree? The top of the tree, that sort of looks like an eye. This eagle over here kind of looks like an eye. This rainbow kind of looks like a nose. And these mountains, I think they're mountains, kind of look like lips. Do you see a face? It's very cool in the sky. At last she came to the lake shore, just as the sun was sinking behind the hills. And the many stars came glittering out like a fiery veil in the darkening sky overhead. And there, standing by the water's edge, was, this, was the sister of the invisible being waiting. She was already at the lake waiting for this, the rough-faced girl. Now the sister of the invisible being was a wise woman. When she looked at you, she didn't just see your face or your hair or your clothes. No. When she looked at you, she would look you right in the eyes. And she could see all the way down to your heart. And she could tell if you had a good, kind heart or a cold, hard, and cruel one. And when she looked at the rough-faced girl, she saw at once that though her skin was scarred and her hair was burnt and her clothes were strange, she had a beautiful and kind heart. And so she welcomed her dearly, um, welcomed her dearly, saying, Ah, my sister, why have you come? And the rough-faced girl replied, I have come to marry the invisible being. Ah, said the sister very gently now, if you want to marry him, you have to have seen him. Tell me, have you seen my brother, the invisible being? And the rough-faced girl said, yes. All right then, said the sister, if you have seen him, tell me, what is his bow made of? And the rough-faced girl said, his bow? Why, his bow is the great curve of the rainbow. Ah, so this picture is a cloud that looks like a person holding a bow, but the bow is a rainbow. Ah, exclaimed the sister in excitement, because I think she got it right. And then she said, tell me, if you have seen my brother, the invisible being, what's the runner of his sled made of? And the rough-faced girl, looking up into the night sky, said, the runner of his sled? Why, it is the spirit road, the Milky Way of stars that spread across the sky. Oh, so his sled is, oh, oh, 10 minutes, 10 minute warning. His sled is uh, stars. Interesting. Ah, cried the sister in wonder and delight. You have seen him. Come with me. And taking the rough faced girl by the hand, she led her back to the great wind mom and sat her in the seat next to the entrance, which is the wife's seat right by the opening. Then they heard footsteps coming along the path. 
closer and closer, the entrance flap of the wigwam lifted up and in stepped the invisible being. And when he saw her sitting there, he said, at last we have been found out. Then smiling kindly, he added, oh my sister, but she is wonderful. And his sister said, yes, she is. And heart. The sister of the invisible being then gave the rough faced girl the finest of buckskin robes and a necklace of perfect shells. And she said, now bathe in the lake and then dress in these clothes. So the rough faced girl bathed in the waters of the lake. Suddenly all the scars vanished from her body and her skin grew smooth again and her black hair grew in long and glossy, grew in long and glossy as a raven. Now anyone could see that she was indeed a wonderful person, and the invisible being and sister had, see, had seen us all from the start. They already knew that. Then at last, the rough-faced girl and the invisible being were married, and they lived together in great gladness, and they were never parted. The end. I like that story. It's a good story. All right. Well, how much time do we have? Eight minutes. Hmm. That's not really enough time for a whole nother book, I don't think, guys. Um, maybe we could sing some songs together. Uh, well, I could maybe finish. This one's pretty fast. This one's called, I'm Fast. <laughs> and it's a fast book. That's funny. I'm Fast, written by Kate and Jim McMullen. Let's see, who is it? Oh, what's that red? You want to have a race? Vroom. First one to Chicago wins. You're on. Let me load my freight. So this is red. It's a car. And this is the blue one is a truck, I guess. And they're going to have a race. All the way to Chicago. Lumber, flat car. Yard crew, hop to. Bricks, gondola. Steel, coil car. Gas, tape car. He's getting all his cars that he's going to carry. Uh, gravel bin, open the hatch, put in some gravel. I don't know why. Throttle up, ready, set, roll. Chugga, 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 chugga. And the car follows. Up. I'm hauling a freezer call car full of ice cream bars. Got to get them to Chicago. Icy cold. So you got to get there soon so they don't melt. Chugga, 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 chugga. Mountain ahead. Car's on my auto rack, duck. So he has to go through the tunnel. And the car's going around mountain windy road. Taking a shortcut through the rock. Choo -choo. Oh man, I'm missing a page. I hate when this happens. The page is missing, guys. Oh well. He went through the through the tunnel, I guess. Choo choo! Cows, you gotta move it. Thanks, ladies. Throttle up. Here I go. Oh, he had to slow down for the cows. Freight cars, sound off. Take it from the back. Car, box car, auto rack, freeze car, hopper, taker car, coil car, gondola, flat car, all on the track. Oh, and the car is stuck on the bottom of the bridge behind some traffic. Uh oh. The train's back in the lead. Clang, 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 clang. Toot, toot. Make way for the freight train. Oh, and the car had to stop again at the train tracks. So the train is in the lead. Onto the side track, throttle back. Won the race to Chicago. Yes. Hey, where's the car? I don't see it. Vroom, vroom, says the car. Huh? You want to race me back, says the train. Take the train, Red. Yeah, roll on up. I'll get you there fast. Oh, he's going to ride on the train this time. You're on mute. I'm yeah, sorry. you're on mute. I'm not on mute anymore. I got it. I'm sorry, guys. My, my thing shut off for some reason. Did you see the end of the story, though? I don't think so. No. No? No? Okay, let me show you. Uh, it ended with... Oh, yeah. Here's how it ended. The, um, the car says, vroom, vroom, like you want to race again. And the, the train says, huh, you want to race me back from Chicago? And then 
he says, take the train, right? Yeah, roll on up. I'll get you there fast. So he's going to give him a ride on the, on his car, the car carrying train. And that's the end. All right, guys. Now I got to, let's see, do the, uh, no. Color song? Uh, you want to uh, color I could do color how many doesn't see how many minutes I have. I wonder if I get to start a whole new thing. Right, can you do a color song for goodbye? Say goodbye. Bye. Not yet. He didn't say goodbye, Josie. Goodbye, Sparkly Unicorn. You felt fish. Oh, uh, that's not my name. You felt fish is not your name. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is it? It's a rainbow unicorn. Oh. It's I got pink. I got pink. I got pink. Look. He's head. you miss you so 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 much mwah, 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 mwah. kisses I miss you so, so much thank you all for doing this with me it's the only time I get to see you so. where are you are you saying bye and I will see you all tomorrow guys bye bye <laughs> bye, bye. bye. Yeah. <laughs>